In this chapter, we will discuss queuing. The queuing model we discuss in this chapter assumes that once customers enter the system, they will never leave until they are served. Another underlying assumption of this model is that the system or process capacity is greater than the customer arrival rate. This assumption ensures that all customers will eventually be served. Such a queue is called a stable queue. Otherwise, the queue will become indefinitely long since customers do not leave until they are served. Such a queue is called unstable queue. Apparently, our focus is stable queues. In the next chapter, we will look into a QE model in which customers may leave when they have to wait. One may wonder why customers would wait when process capacity is greater than customer arrival rate. The answer is the variability in customer arrival as well as in service or processing time. Customers do not arrive uniformly. The service or processing time is also a random variable. It takes long period of time to serve some customers while it takes short period of time to serve some other customers. When we say that the system or process capacity is greater than the customer arrival rate, we actually mean that the average process capacity is greater than the average customer arrival rate. Now let's look into a service process or system. On the customer side, let's say the average inter-arrival time between customers is A. That is to say, the average customer arrival rate denoted by lambda is equal to 1 divided by A. This arrival rate will also be the flow rate of our system because the arrival rate is less than the process capacity. One way to understand the inter-arrival time and arrival rate is this. Let's say on average 6 customers arrive per hour. It is equivalent to say that we will have one customer every 10 minutes on average. The former is the arrival rate, 6 customers per hour, and the latter is the inter-arrival time, A, which is equal to 10 minutes in this example. The variability in customer arrival is described by a statistics concept called coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation is defined as the ratio of standard deviation and the mean. In the case of customer inter-arrival time, its coefficient of variation denoted by CVA is equal to the standard deviation of the inter-arrival time divided by the average inter-arrival time A. Now let's look at the service side. Let's say there are M servers. We assume that each server is equally capable and efficient. The average processing or service time is denoted by P. As a result, the service rate per server denoted by mu is 1 over P. For example, if it takes one server 5 minutes to serve or process one customer on average, then the service rate per server is 12 customers per hour. Similarly, the variability in processing time is also captured by coefficient of variation. The coefficient of variation of processing time denoted by CVP is equal to the standard deviation of processing time divided by the average processing time P. Given the number of servers M, we can easily find the process capacity. 
which is the product of number of servers and the average service rate. In other words, process capacity is equal to m times mu. Alternatively, process capacity is also equal to m divided by p because mu is equal to 1 over p. Next, let's look into a key concept in QE model, which is process utilization u. We know that utilization is the ratio of flow rate and capacity. In our case, the flow rate is the arrival rate lambda. Therefore, in our case, the process utilization is given by lambda over m times mu. Alternatively, the process utilization is equal to average process time p divided by the product of m and average inter arrival time a. Understanding the meaning of the process utilization is very important. Let's say utilization u is 80%. It is to say that on average, 80% servers are busy at any given time. It is also to say that on average, a server is busy 80% of the time. So a convenient interpretation of utilization u is simply how busy a server is or how busy the process is. For a service process or system, there are three important performance measures with regard to time. We've already talked about the average processing or service time p. The other two are capital T, the average total time a customer stays in the system, and TQ, the average waiting time of a customer. Not surprisingly, capital T, the total time a customer stays in the system is the sum of TQ, the waiting time, and P, the processing time. TQ is harder to find. Here, we provide a formula for computing the average waiting time TQ. Another performance measurement is the number of customers. Similarly, we have three such measures. The first one is the average number of customers in the system at any given time, denoted by i. The second one is the average number of customers being served at any given time, denoted by ip. The last one is the average number of customers waiting in line, denoted by iq. Obviously, i is the sum of ip and IQ. Now let's see how we can find IP and IQ. IP is the average number of customers being served. It is reasonable to assume that one server can only serve one customer at a time. Therefore, the number of customers being served is equal to the number of busy servers. According to our early discussion, the percentage of busy servers is simply process utilization u. If we have m servers in total, so IP, the average number of customers being served, is m times u. We will apply the Little's law to compute IQ, the average number of customers waiting in line. IQ can be considered as the average inventory of our queue or waiting line. The flow time is the average waiting time TQ, and the flow rate is the arrival rate lambda. Therefore, the average number of customers waiting in line, IQ, is equal to TQ times lambda, or TQ divided by the average inter arrival time A. Next, we will look at an example and see how we can apply these concepts to answer some interesting and practical questions. Customers send emails to a help desk of an online retailer every two minutes on average, and the standard deviation of the inter arrival time is also two minutes. The online retailer has three employees answering emails. 
It takes on average four minutes to write a response email. The standard deviation of the processing time is two minutes. Let's answer two questions. A. Estimate the average customer wait before being served. B. How many emails would there be on average that have been submitted to the online retailer but not yet answered? Next, I'm going to switch to my Excel file to find answers to these questions. Once again, we are going to collect information provided by the problem first. Let's see what we know. First, M, the number of server, is 3, and inter arrival time is 2 minutes. What about processing time P, which is the time it takes to respond by email? That is 4 minutes. And we also know that standard deviation of inter arrival time A is 2 minutes. And the standard deviation of processing time is also 2 minutes. And based on the information provided, we can find, for example, lambda, the arrival rate or flow rate. It's going to be equal to 1 over A, which is equal to 0.5. That is to say, on average, every minute we get 0.5 email. You can, of course, convert this to emails per hour. In that case, you are going to get, on average, 30 emails per hour. Now, let's look at service rate. It takes, on average, 4 minutes to write a response email. So, the service rate will be equal to 1 over 4, or 0.25 emails per minute. Once again, you can convert that into 15 emails per hour. Process capacity is the product of number of servers and service rate. So it's going to be equal to number of servers times the service rate we got just now. The process capacity is 0 0.75 emails per minute. Next, let's look at the coefficient of variation for both A and P. CVA is equal to sigma A divided by A itself. So CVA is equal to 1. CVP is equal to sigma P divided by P, and CVP is equal to 0.5. Next, let's look at the process utilization U. It's equal to, well, whichever formula you would like to use. I'm going to use the latter one, which is equal to flow rate lambda 0.5 divided by the process capacity 0.75. The utilization is 2 third or 66.7 percent that is to say on average two-thirds of the servers are busy or a server is busy two-thirds of the time next I'm going to compute the values for all the key measures we talked about previously and once we do that you will find it's easy to answer our question A and B of this problem First, let's find TQ, the average waiting time. That's where we need the long formula we introduced earlier. To save time, I have already created formula. I'm just going to copy and paste. And we get that on average, each customer, in this case, each email will wait for about 1.19 minutes. Once we know TQ, it's easy to find T, the 
average time a customer stays in the system is equal to TQ plus P, which is 4 minutes. So T is equal to 5.19 minutes. Next, let's look at IQ, the average number of customers waiting in line. In our case, it is the number of emails waiting to be replied. It's equal to TQ times the arrival rate lambda. And we get 0 0.59 or 0 0.6 emails. Next, IP, the average number of customers being served. In our case, it is the average number of emails being replied. It's equal to number of servers times the utilization. And we get that on average, two emails are being replied at any given time. To get I, the total number of customers in our system it's pretty easy and straightforward. It's equal to IQ plus IP, which is 2.59 or 2.6 emails. Now let's look at the two questions of this problem. First one asks us to estimate the average customer weight before being served. This is nothing but our TQ. So we simply copy and paste. Question two, it's asking us how many emails would there be that have been submitted to the online retailer but not yet answered. This is nothing but the total number of emails in our system either waiting to be replied or being replied. So this is simply our I, 2.59 emails.